you don't attain your natural self. You simply recognize it as already the case. And, and today we'll make it in an exploratory way, all of us, and, and you'll find that you'll, you'll get a little closer to that. <clears throat> now, the, uh, what we call the natural self is what is natural. Okay, so when you're happy, when you're feeling contented, when you're feeling totally relaxed, you are in your natural self. Many times people, and I'm a hypnotherapist and I've been doing it for so many years, people sometimes come with so many fears, guilt, shame, from childhood or even later in life, and they really begin to feel that this is their life. We become victims of what is happening. Now, I know for, for a fact that that is not your natural self. Fear, guilt, shame is not your natural self. So what we do here is really get back to what, to what we really, really are. So what is the one thing that gets us back to the natural self? What is the one ingredient, the one absolute must? Okay, I call it the alert listening the ability to listen. But you see, listening, we miss it because we listen with our concepts, we listen with judgments, we listen with the past. And when you listen that way, you don't really hear what is really happening. So I, I'd like to ask you a question right now. And, um, and this question will help you to see how well you listen and of course there's no right or wrong about it because the moment you discover that you're not really listening that becomes the listening and this is the paradox sometimes people think that realization is going to be something very pleasant well that's spiritual fascination oftentimes realization follows a shock to your system you see and that makes you realize that my goodness I really thought this was real See, and then you look at it deeper and deeper. Okay, now the question I'd like to ask you, and I'd like to have you all participate, is this. What do you want more than anything in this life? What is the most important thing to you in this life? May I have somebody tell me? I would say, oh, yes. my own self. Capital S. Capital S, okay. So that is your greatest okay, drive, okay. Who else? Nina? What would you say is the most important thing in your life to you? To share the love that I am. To share the love that you are, okay. Anybody else? A freedom from the critical mind. To be free of the critical mind, okay. The ego. Okay. This? What would you say is the most important thing in your life? The, the one thing you want more than anything? Okay. Okay. Bill, what would you say? To live in truth. Things. To live in truth. Okay. And Brent? I thought I knew, but <laughs> I don't know. No. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, anybody else? To open to the truth, to open to the truth. Okay. okay, okay, all right. Okay, now we were talking about alert listening. Okay, and we want the truth. We want to be free of the critical mind. We want this. We want that. But what we really want is the same thing, all of us. Because I'm going to ask you the next question. Who wants to be free of the critical mind? The critical mind itself. <laughs> you. Who wants the truth? You. So the first, yes, so the first thing, this is what it happens, you see, with the alert listening. The first thing is to realize that all you ever want is you. And, and initially we call it me. And that's fine, that's perfect, because all you ever want is really me. We have to be very honest here, you see. 
And when you're totally honest, you really start the path. See, we talk about against the ego and against the me and transcending the me. And all the time the me says, yes, I want to be enlightened. I want to get rid of the me. But, but it is the me that wants all this. You see? So let's get in touch with this me. Now, what is interesting, when you begin to discover that the me is all I want, truly, honestly, because whatever you go, wherever you go, you are this aware space, you are this vantage point. When you are, are true with that, you begin to see that everybody is the same. Everybody is the same as you. So what happens is that we all look differently in the physical form. The human part of us is different. The being is the same. So therefore, when you begin to see this and stay with me here, you see, my goodness, it's true. In the being, we all want this. We don't understand what this is. We call it me. For lack of a better word, I call it I am Bert for lack of a better definition. But you see, everybody wants that first. Since we are all the same, there is really no separation, is there? The separation is only seemingly in the body. But we all want the same thing, and then we move to the biggest part of all. And this is when we are ready. Once we've seen there is no separation, we move to the biggest one. Who is this me? Who is this I that wants this? But now we are ready for it. We are ready to meet it. And no matter how much you explore, you have to be very sincere, alert, listening. No matter how you have to really listen, because you see, in when you are in your truth in this moment, now, and you ask, who is this me? And there is no answer. Of all the years that I've been doing hypnotherapy and asking people this question and, you know, and go, goes into the many, many hundreds, nobody has been able to answer that question. So they came up with certain definition. Well, I am the past, I am my education, I am this, but now, right now, this moment, who are you? You see, and we can't answer it. So who is it that I am doing it for? What is it that I want to be enlightened for? For whom? I want to be happy, but who is it that wants to be happy? See, are, are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. See, this is when it, it comes to the core. This is when it starts to move into the heart. Okay? Uh, we're no longer caught in, in, uh, in, in the knowledge from a book. Okay? Which is okay, which is understandable. But it's no longer knowledge that we can put in words. It becomes a knowing inside. That what we truly want. You see, it's the heart wanting the heart. It's the self seeking the self. So we begin to expand that who, you, who I think I am is no longer just an aware space, just this vantage point only. I am much bigger than that, but I don't know that. So I keep expanding and expanding and expanding when I begin to understand that we are all exactly the same beyond the form. Um, what, what I'd like to do next is to explore some of the questions that I've been getting through emails within the past um, <clears throat> few weeks, actually. And I put them in a little booklet, which you can have free when you leave. And, um, and these are quite relevant, and I picked up the first, best five because I felt that they would answer this. You see, before we tackle them, let me say this. The biggest understanding, the greatest understanding you can have, okay, which will make everything clear, is to know the difference between awareness and thought. Now, everything that you think, I know it sounds redundant, but everything that you think is a thought. But what if you really look at that? Alert listening, remember? Alert listening. Everything that you think is a thought. Therefore,